Over 2,000 years ago, ancient Chinese scholars observed the changing patterns in our natural world, the climate, the turning of the seasons, and astronomy. The scholars measured and divided the sun's annual movements into 24 equal parts, creating the 24 solar terms, which were used to govern agriculture in ancient China. Even to this day, this invention still guides the lives and traditions of hundreds of millions of Chinese people. Towards the end of September, it's the autumn equinox time. Day and night are equally long. Summer and winter are equally far apart. Farmers are busy bringing in the harvest, and every mid-autumn festival, families get together for a bit of moon worship. The autumn equinox is midway through autumn and marks the beginning of deepest autumn. The most obvious change is in the color of the trees. They're so vivid they could be in an oil painting. After this solar term, there's no more thunder. The insects that woke up in the third solar term, Jingzhe, are either dying or looking for a safe place to survive the winter. Dunhuang is in northwestern China, in a transitional region between Badain Jaran and Taklamakan deserts. It used to be on the main thoroughfare of the Silk Road trade route. I came over here for mid-autumn to explore deep into the hinterland of China and take in this incredible desert oasis. We can imagine that ever since the Han Dynasty of 2,200 years ago, European businessmen, looking a bit like me, have been here leading teams of camel, transporting bundles of silk and other material from China around the world. Massive wealth flowed along the Silk Road to China as well. China at the time was one of the chief trading nations of the world. Now, Dunhuang has lost its pivotal position in global trade. But this Gobi Desert is still a sacred place for Chinese people yearning for a distant past. There's a rhyming couplet for this season. When days and nights are just as long, hard work just goes on and on. Cropping cycles are the farmer's number one concern. So the solar terms are extraordinarily clear on planning. And it is set that autumn equinox is when Dunhuang farmers will harvest their cotton. Dunhuang this area, the amount of water is very low. It is very low in the area. It is very low in the area. It is very low in the area. The area 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 is very low in the area. Dunhuang is surrounded by desert, so drought and water shortage is pretty common. Because of or in spite of this, it has become an important base for cotton production. This makes me think back to the Xiaoman solar term in Shengzhe, where there was copious amounts of rain. And the silkworms thrived, raising a whole industry of silk production. Huge differences in regional climate have not limited Chinese creativity over time. For thousands of years, silk and cotton have warmed the backs of Chinese people in different parts of this vast land. Their inventions lie in a key climatic difference between north and south. Zhuang 
This is one of the most important cotton production sites in China, and it is also the largest colored cotton testing station in the country. Station master Feng Keyun is in charge. Tai 有日外母的基地,目前是在國內來說是日生面,是個日面是國內最大的生產基地。The autumn equinox is harvest season in the water-rich regions of China. Farmers are harvesting rice and fruit around about now. But in Dunhuang, just look at the full, light cotton balls that grow on this cracked and salty soil. You have to wonder at the plant's tenacity and how ancient civilizations across China adapted to local conditions. Having said that, cotton doesn't actually come from here. More than 1,500 years ago, it was brought into the country by camel caravan, trundling along the Silk Road, introduced to Dunhuang from India and Arabia. 1,500 years later, Cotton makes up to 70% of crops grown here. 60% of farmers' income is in some way connected to cotton. Apart from all the cotton waiting to be harvested, there are also the forests of the Gobi Desert. Coming into their own in autumn, for them it's the most beautiful season by far. Poplar trees. Because they can survive for thousands of years, the locals call them the heroes of the desert. And this part of the Gobi Desert witnesses the most vibrant moment of the autumn equinox period. For a while now, there's been a limited water supply on weekdays because it's been needed for irrigation. After harvest, farmers need less water and the nearby reservoir will be drained into the surrounding Gobi Desert. Red willow and medicinal herb called camel shap grow wild. These are the favorite foodstuffs of the precious two humped Bactrian camel. As long as 5,000 years ago, human beings living on the edge of the desert had domesticated the camel. Apart from providing camel fur and milk for humans, camels became the most important form of desert transportation. Fully loaded, stepping out onto the Silk Road. When the first batch of cotton seeds and many other precious materials were loaded onto the back of a camel and driven along the endless Silk Road, human civilization opened a whole other chapter. And now, China has the fastest trains in the world, massive world-beating airports, and there's really no need to use camel caravans anymore. But in Dunhuang, the locals still keep up the tradition of having camels. The Crescent Village. It got its name because it's located next to an oasis that's shaped like a crescent. The magic of this crescent moon oasis is that it's been surrounded by desert for thousands of years, but has never dried up. It looks like every villager in the crescent village is an expert in raising camels. Every tourist season, the camels in the village become the main means of transportation in Dunhuang. Thousands of tourists come here. Almost everyone wants to ride a camel to get a feel for what crossing the desert silk road is really like.
The autumn tourist season is around the time of China's National Day holiday. The villagers of the Crescent Village are preparing for their most lucrative time of the year. This is a没什么渔民了啊对这个咱们是专门是喂骆驼的一种渔民所以它不接这个咱们所说那个棒子它肯定就是不需要太多水它就能这么长是吧对对它也属于那种耐旱的那就是到这个季节它们就吃这个啊对
and he made people see Dunhuang a whole other way. These small pieces are what? 这个是把料子全部拆开了以后，这个就是它是肚皮这一片这是脖子那个树毛，这脖子五十四片嗯，才能成功一个骆驼的。In order to meet the needs of his customers, Zhang Jianzhong designs thirty-six kinds, all different styles of camel craft. The workshop is preparing for the National Day holiday following the autumn equinox by making masses of model camels to sell.机器做的我们现在还没有找到像这样的机器做的机器压它的风布风布压起来还得组装你像你的鞋子吧你皮鞋是吧对你我们现在手工拿那个底你不知道见过没有那一天一双底得拿一天或者两天你现在工价太高了